Good day to everybody. We are here for another daily devotions, and today we begin the book of Numbers as we are gathered here on this um, February uh, 11th. This is session 42 and Numbers, the first two chapters. Let me begin um, by reading the introduction from the Wesley Study Bible on the book of Numbers. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned this in the past, but I want to mention it because the word comes up. The first five books of the Bible are considered to be the law. So when you, re when you uh, <clears throat> read Jesus in the Gospels, uh, the law is always referenced to the first five books of the Bible. And those first five books are called Pentateuch, Penta meaning five. So the first five books are the Pentateuch. All right, so let me read to you from that introduction. When Numbers opens, the Israelites are camped in the wilderness of Sinai, where they have been since Moses led them out of Egypt. Exodus revealed how God brought them to Sinai to instruct them on becoming a treasured possession, a priestly kingdom, and a holy nation. These instructions continue through Leviticus and into Numbers, which also narrates the journey after they break camp. Numbers demonstrates that within the framework of God's plan for further provision, guidance, and blessing, Israel must choose to proceed faithfully or retreat fearfully. The title of this fourth book of the Pentateuch comes from counting two generations of Israel's males who were able to go to war. The first census counts men 20 years old and above who had experienced Egyptian slavery and deliverance, but who rebelled. The second census enrolls the next generation, which eventually enters Canaan under Joshua and receives land allotments. This book could also be called rebellions, for Israel repeatedly breaks covenant, loses faith, and even seeks to return to Egypt. Although they question Moses' authority at every turn, we witness here his solidarity with the Israelites and his status as the ideal prophet and the closest friend of the Lord. There are other reminders of Exodus, such as the interplay between God's providence, God's determination to bless Israel, and human free will. That is the influence of God's covenant partners on outcomes. John Wesley writes an abstract of much of this book we have in a few words, Psalm 9510. For 40 long years was I grieved with this generation. Numbers abounds in drama, tensions, poignant images, and it treats concerns also found in other biblical books. Who belongs to Israel? How does one enter or exit this community? Who is rebuked? Who is affirmed? The answers are surprising. All right, that's Numbers. And so we get into the first two chapters of Numbers, and what do we get? Well, we get Numbers. So we have the first census taken of Israel. And if you get through uh, the, most of the first chapter, it's very repetitive. Uh, so you get, uh, you know, Moses, God comes to Moses in the tent of meeting and tells him what uh, what they should do and who's to assist in the counting of these men. Now, this, the census really performs two purposes. The first is it's sort of a military role for conscription. It's who is, who is able to serve uh, in case we need to go into battle. We want to know what those numbers are. Uh, and secondly, it is also uh, useful to arrange the camp when Israel is encamped how they are arranged. And you'll note that they are going to be arranged uh, around the tabernacle. So you have the tabernacle in the center because it's the center of Israel's life. It's the center of the covenant community. And then encamped around the camp are the Levites and uh, around the, the tabernacle are the Levites. And you'll note they're the only ones who are not counted. Why is that? Because the job of the Levites is to take care of the tabernacle. They are, they are to discharge the duties, the daily duties uh, that go along with the tabernacle. They are responsible for tearing down the tabernacle when they move, putting it back up. Uh, when they uh, stop somewhere to encamp for a while, 
their and that's their main task. And so because of that, they are uh, uh, exempt from any kind of military service should that ever come up. But because their job is to focus on the temple and you will note that the tabernacle is in the center and the Levites are around and then the other 11 tribes have designated places around the tabernacle um, uh, after the Levites. The idea here at this point is the closer to God, the holier. So where is the most holy place for the presence of God? It's the tabernacle. And then the Levites, who in some ways serve as a bridge or a buffer, uh, because it is quite the thing to come into the presence of a holy God. We have seen already uh, the importance of God's people being holy, but also the importance of God's people being careful when they enter into holy places, when they engage with holy things, how those things are handled, how those duties are discharged. And so the Levites are the buffer between the people and the tabernacle, at least in reference to place. They're also the bridge. Uh, they are the go-between, if you will, between the tabernacle and the people. So that's really the purpose of the census. Now, let me say one thing about the numbers. Do we take these numbers literally? So, you know, the tribe of Dan, 62,700, the tribe of Asher, 41,500. How do we take these numbers? Part of, there's two problems here. The first is the ancients used numbers in all kinds of ways. We use, we use numbers the same way too. We use them literally to count. We also use them symbolically uh, as well. You know, we uh, uh, joke or laugh if, if we, uh, I know there's a, there is a telephone exchange in the Akron area. First three numbers are 666. So, you know, we use numbers sometimes in symbolic ways. Uh, uh, ways to point something else out. And the ancients did this too. So we have two problems. First, it's that. Sometimes we're not sure how these folks are using numbers. We have actually uh, other ancient uh, uh, inscriptions that refer to Assyrian kings, for example, as living 12,000 years. Now we know they didn't live 12,000 years. So they're saying something symbolic with that. But the, the dilemma always is we don't know what the symbolism is. When you see these numbers of, of the tribes, Ephraim, 40,500, we know that in that day, some 1200, 1100 BC, uh, the numbers are just too high. Uh, those numbers are not unusual today as the population of the globe has greatly increased. But those are really high numbers to be taken literally. So I think it's safe to assume that they're saying something symbolically with these numbers, but it's just that we don't know what it is. It's hard to tell. Um, it's not that the real numbers don't matter and they would have had those numbers, uh, but, but uh, what the writer is telling us is something other than uh, what, what these numbers mean literally. So we just don't know about that, but they are taking this census um, and uh, there uh, you have at the end of chapter one, uh, again, reference to Levi. Uh, they're not enrolled in the census. They're not part of it because their job uh, is, is to uh, do something different. So they're not available. Uh, and you get into chapter two and then you get the uh, geographical uh, situating if you will, this positioning of the, all the 12 tribes. Uh, and you get at the end of chapter two, the Israelites did just as the Lord had commanded. They camped by regiments. Notice that language. This, is, this also is military encampment. There's something organized about this in the way the military uh, even today would do things, correct? And they set out the same way, everyone by clans according to ancestral houses. So, what we get in the first two chapters is this first census and the people obeying. We're going to find out as we continue to go in numbers that obeying is going to be a problem uh, for the people. 
And so we're going to get next week into chapters, or next week, next time, into chapters three. Uh, and you're going to get uh, duties of the Levites. And there you'll get a census for the Levites. Uh, they will finally be counted. Uh, and then discussion of the redemption of the firstborn. So, so that's what we're going to get in chapters three and chapter four. And then uh, we're going to have sense, uh, sense, censuses taking, taken of uh, different other people, the Colathites and the Ger Ger Gershenshites and the Maryites. And uh, as one of my seminary professors used to say, all those ites and shites. So we're going to get uh, a census on that. What is going on with that? So that is the first part uh, of the book of Numbers. Um, it is interesting, I do want to mention uh, something about the name, because the name of uh, this document in Hebrew, because usually we're dealing with the Greek names, but in Hebrew, uh, this document is referred to as in the wilderness. And usually the Hebrews would title the book based on something in the first line or first sentence. So Numbers starts out, the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. So the book then is entitled In the Wilderness. We hear numbers because it involves a lot of numbers too. All right, that's where we are. So let's finish in prayer. Gracious God, thank you uh, that you count all of us. Uh, we read these numbers uh, so far away and census being taken but how grateful we are that you have numbered all of us is important, that each and every one of us matters to you. Each and every one of us is in your image and your son has come to die for each and every one of us. Help us to remember that our number matters. Who we are as individuals matters to you. Who we are as a church community matters to you. Thank you for that. Bless us in this day, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, folks, tomorrow it is. Hasta mañana.